In ancient times, unexplored regions on maps would often be given fearsome legends like Here Be Dragons. Unknowns were frightening, and it gave some comfort to at least be able to label the unknown. Hypothesized dragons seemed a good enough explanation for what would otherwise be ungraspable. With a made-up concept and a few words, the unknown becomes simple and satisfying. Those ancient cartographers would have felt quite at home today. De facto practice among most people is still to give satisfying labels to quantify and conveniently package the unknown. When faced with a phenomenon for which one does not personally know a rational explanation, like dreaming of your uncle the night before he dies, it's much easier to accept a simple explanation like psychic connection than to grasp the complexities of cognitive phenomena, confirmation bias, and the law of large numbers. Here be dragons is so much easier. The vast majority of the population accepts dragons, or their logical equivalents, as natural components of our world that should be taken for granted. Let's have a look at some modern-day dragons. There's something to be said for listening to the body as opposed to sort of imposing medical information on what you expect your, the body to do. I do believe in ghosts. I would go see them for all the way from a cold to um, a cancer. I, I mean, I believe, I really believe in, in, um, in healing other than our conventional medicine that we have here. 9-11, uh, I think, was, a, a, it was an attack on our own people by our own government. I'm, I'm a real superstitious person, and I do believe in not stepping on the cracks, and when a black cat runs out in front of your car, I will stop and turn around and go the other way. A great deal of research goes into the development of, of many pharmaceuticals, and I think that the primary uh, research they do is how to, how to gain the greatest profits. I think that, that we have the ability to sort of sense and feel um, sort of energy movements. Detox tea, uh, it tastes really good and um, yeah, according to the label uh, it, it's supposed to uh, rid your body of impurities uh, and it seems to work. You know, you, you drink it and your sweat smells terrible. I have. I've had cr craniosacral um, you know, therapy where you, they you're, you're not, the energy from the fingers is, go, goes into your um, head, it's around your head. And I think that organic foods are often grown uh, by people who care about uh, their bodies and about the earth. Uh, and I, I think that a lot of that is, is, um, is embedded in the food. And uh, you can taste it. In a way, you can sense the love that was put into it. I mean, I sort of, I sort of believe in in, a, in, a, in an additional dimension. Homeopathic medicine is, is the same as, as uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a watered down version of, uh, uh, of, of combination of organic foods and, and seeking out spiritual truth. My name is Brian Dunning. 
I have a free weekly audio podcast on the internet called Skeptoid at Skeptoid.com dedicated to furthering knowledge by exposing the widespread pseudosciences that infect popular culture. Each week I focus on one topic that you've been hearing about in the news, an urban legend, a useless alternative medicine scheme, a conspiracy theory, or whatever the latest supernatural phenomenon is. But you can only reach so many people with a podcast, and I believe that this material is important. So I decided to make this short film to reach a much broader audience and provide this general introduction to critical analysis of pop phenomena. Other people have made films to distribute on the internet, of course, but more often than not, they're used to spread paranoid conspiracy theories or make political statements. And whenever you turn on the television, you find that the science channels have largely turned into paranormal channels. The news reports free energy machines and miraculous crying statues without critique. And daytime talk programs have devolved into promotions for the latest New Age healing book or celebrity-endorsed diet. And that's why I made this film. You'll often hear me use the word pseudoscience. A pseudoscience is an idea that claims to be real, but in fact is not supported by any science or any evidence. Often they'll use scientific sounding language to describe how it works. Usually it's a product that someone's making money from. Most complementary and alternative medical systems are pseudosciences. Psychic powers and astrology and feng shui and telekinesis are all pseudosciences. People on television who pretend to detect ghosts using scientific instruments are practicing pseudoscience. Herbal detoxification is a pseudoscience. Did I just make a whole series of really bold statements? Not really. All I did was point out that these ideas are not supported by any evidence. They have no rational scientific hypotheses behind them and no experimental data indicating that they work. I'm not the one who made bold statements. It's the people promoting these pseudosciences who need to back up their claims. But they don't, and unfortunately, they often don't need to. Victims continue wasting money on worthless frauds. But it's much more than that. When we invest our faith in a pseudoscience without questioning its validity, we're recreating the medieval dark ages. For 500 years, there was essentially no progress in any scientific field or in human rights. Scientific experimentation, and thus learning, was often illegal. If we don't test, if we don't experiment, we don't learn, we don't progress. Critical thinking is the single most important driver of the advancement of the human race. The minute we let down our guard and accept absurd pseudoscientific claims at face value, we're giving away our progress back to the dragons. Now let's take a few minutes and go through some of the common warning signs. These are the red flags that you can watch for that will help you identify pseudoscience. The appeal to authority is the use of authoritative imagery to lend the appearance of credibility to a product. Quite often, this means a picture of someone in a white lab coat. Instant credibility! Other examples of authority-based marketing gimmicks include celebrity endorsements and mentions of certifications, colleges, academies, and institutes. Good science presents good data. It never needs to resort to hokey marketing gimmicks to impress you, and is almost never presented with a white lab coat. Beware of any product or idea that is said to be based on ancient wisdom. In ancient times, very little useful or true information was known about human anatomy and many other sciences. Since those days, scientists have learned entire encyclopedias of information about our universe and our bodies. It's completely illogical and backwards to think that the ancients had a better understanding of anything than modern science. Their hearts were in the right place, but in ancient times we simply didn't yet have the tools developed over the subsequent centuries of learning. That's why ancient wisdom gave us things like the flat earth theory, human sacrifice, slavery, a 30-year average human lifespan, rain dances, the burning of witches, and the medical technique of bloodletting to rebalance the four basic bodily humors. 
But alternative therapies based on ancient wisdom have stood the test of time, haven't they? Well, it doesn't matter how long a treatment has been around. The only criteria medical science has for a treatment is, does it work? We don't care whether the ancient Chinese believed it, we only care about the test results. When you hear any product advertised as being based on ancient wisdom, it's probably because they have no real evidence to support their claims. Ancient wisdom should always be a red flag. Confirmation bias is what we call our tendency to remember events that coincide with our beliefs and don't take notice of events that don't. This is why you can walk out of an hour-long session with a psychic who asked 200 questions, made 300 probing guesses, of which maybe 10 were close to meaningful, and say, wow, she knew everything about me. Many hospital workers think that a full moon means a crazy night in the ER. They all remember those crazy nights when there was a full moon, thus confirming the belief. But they tend to forget the crazy nights when there wasn't a full moon. The data shows that full moon nights are no busier than any other, but we believe the myth because of confirmation bias. Many people will often confuse correlation with causation. If you happened to take an herbal supplement around the same time your cancer went into remission, you're likely to think the supplement caused the remission. We confuse correlation with causation. Here's a valid correlation. People who eat a lot of rice tend to have black hair. I think we can all come up with perfectly logical reasons why these two things happen to go together, but fortunately, I don't think too many of us think one causes the other. Here's another valid correlation. Autistic children are often diagnosed shortly after receiving their regular vaccinations. The reason for this correlation is simply that vaccination age just happens to be about the same age that autism symptoms become apparent. But many people have wrongly drawn a causal relationship, and look at all the trouble that's resulted. Some people are actually preventing their children from getting vaccinated, due to a lack of critical thinking, an irresponsible promotion of alarmism and misinformation by the media. Correlation is not necessarily causation. A red herring is a distraction from following a logical line of evidence. In the old days, if a bloodhound was on your trail, it was believed that dragging a red herring across your path would distract the bloodhound off your scent. Red herrings, therefore, are irrelevant pieces of information thrown into an argument to distract you from the real topic. Red herrings are a favorite of conspiracy theorists. If you listen to the people who try to convince us that September 11th was perpetrated by our own government, their evidence consists of virtually nothing but red herrings. Who crashed the planes into the buildings? Well, Dick Cheney had business interests in the Middle East. Maybe so, but who crashed the planes into the buildings? Well, the leaseholder had an insurance policy on his skyscrapers. Maybe so, but who crashed the planes into the buildings? George Bush's younger brother Marvin was a principal in a security company, and the World Trade Center was one of their clients. Maybe so, but who crashed the planes into the buildings? Brian Dunning visited the World Trade Center only two years before they collapsed. And isn't it interesting that he did a podcast episode debunking 9-11 conspiracy claims? Red herrings. These are irrelevant distractions that do not in any way address the point under discussion. They merely have the...